Now here's the diagram of the eye we've just developed in the previous clip. And I'm aware that the anatomy here is somewhat complicated. So I want to try and systematize it somewhat. So when we're talking about eye anatomy, the structures in the eye. We can divide this into two sections really. There's the internals and the externals or the layers. So first of all, internals. What are the internal structures? Well, we know about the lens to facilitate accommodation. And then behind that, we have the large vitreous body. The large vitreous body in that area we call the postremal chamber. Postremal not posterior chamber because the posterior chamber is something different. There's the posterior chamber and the anterior chamber. And just to remind ourselves in the diagram we've been using, the vitreous in the post remal chamber is this large area here inside the blue line. This is the lens in yellow. Now the anterior and posterior talk about being in front and behind of the iris. So this is the iris, so the posterior chamber is here and the anterior chamber is here, but we notice that they're both filled with the aqueous humour. So they're internal structures. Now next we come to the layers. The layers in the eye. And the outer layer is fibrous. The fibrous layer. Sometimes the layers are called tunics. Tunic just means coat or layer. So the fibrous layer consists of the sclera and the cornea. And external to the sclera, we have the conjunctiva. External to the sclera, also lining the inside of the eyelids. So these are all part of the fibrous layer, and we can see that on this diagram. So we're thinking about the sclera, the outside, in blue, the outside fibrous layer. But it's continuous with the cornea. It's just that the cornea is transparent. So we include it in this, in this section. And between the sclera and the cornea, there is the scleral venous sinus, also called the canal of Schlem. After the German anatomist Fred Schlem, fascinating character, was once arrested for cutting a body up in a graveyard. But he did this original work back in the 1830s and he discovered this scleral venous sinus. It's called venous, but it's more of a lymphatic really, to drain away the excessive aqueous humor. So that we have that fibrous layer. Now the next layer is vascular. The vascular layer. A lot of the blood vessels go through this layer. And we have the choroid. We have the ciliary body and also included in this is the iris. So as you see here, 
This layer is in red because it's vascular. So here we have this layer. This is the choroid around here. But it's continuous with the ciliary body, which is continuous with the iris. So it's all one vascular layer in red on this uh, original diagram that hopefully you've built up already. So layers, fibrous, vascular, the last one is the retina. Now the retina. Now the retina has an outer pigmented area which is dark in colour because we don't want light rays bouncing around inside. We don't want them reflecting inside the eyeball because that could generate additional false images. And it would make vision very glary if that were the case. So there's an outer pigmented layer and that is immediately on top of the uh, choroid, the vascular layer. But then on top of the pigmented layer, we have the neural layer of the retina. The neural layer. As the name suggests, it's uh, neural tissue. So here we see the neural tissue in green and we have the retina here. And we notice the retina goes round and it also goes behind the ciliary body and behind the iris. And actually both layers of the retina, the outer pigmented and the neural layer, do go around that whole area. But we can subdivide the, the neural layer into the visual retina, sometimes called the optical retina, that contains the rod and the cone cells that actually generate the vision. And we can have a non, we have a non-visual layer as well. It's still neural, but it's non-visual. Now what happens actually is the pigmented layer is all the way around. It's the basal layer of this green bit. And it goes forward to line the inside of the ciliary bodies in the iris. And actually there's very a very thin layer of neural tissue actually on top of this air, on top of this anterior part of the retina here. But the larger area of the retina from here back, backwards is the visual retina. So this area in the visual retina is light sensitive, whereas the very thin layer of neural tissue in the anterior retina is not light sensitive. So what we see is we can divide the eye up into these areas. So we have the internals that's around here, the internals, and we could divide off this area here as well if we wanted to as a subsection. The area in front of the lens, the posterior and the anterior chamber in front of the lens, with the posterior chamber being behind the iris and the anterior chamber being in front of the iris. Then we have the fibrous layer, sclera and cornea, with the conjunctiva external to the sclera and lining the eyelids. Then we have the vascular layer, consisting of the choroid, the ciliary body and the iris. Again, a, a continuous layer, but with these different components. And then we have the retina, the inner layer, and the retina consisting of an outer pigmented layer and an inner neural layer. And again, if we wanted to, we could divide the neural layer into the visual and the non-visual areas. So a kind of mind map of the anatomy in the retina, in the whole eyeball rather, the retina, the 
vascular, the fibrous and the internals.